you're watching the ZNS Health Zone. ZNS Health Zone is sponsored by Doctors Hospital. Other sponsors include Save More Drugs. This is the ZNS Health Zone. I'm your host, Shashina Roll Farkasin. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tonight, we guide you through today's episode focusing on three crucial aspects of health diabetes, metabolism, and weight management. Now, according to statistics, 49.2% of adults in the Bahamas are obese. In fact, 30.4% are overweight with female predominance, over half of which is 50.7% of Bahamian women that are considered obese. As for the men, though, it is 47.4%. And while many people struggle with weight loss, here are some of the fad diets some have tried to lose weight. I believe everything is in moderation, and the biggest thing you can do is cut sugar from your diet. That includes all sweet drinks, no fry foods, cut back on the white foods, cakes, anything like white flour, white rice. Just fry food, just get you fat. So yeah, just stay away from fried food. Uh, sometimes food can block up different parts of the body that you're not even aware of and then you wonder why sometimes you're irritated you know but sometimes it's the food that we eat that causes us to be uncomfortable and so eating healthy helps you to feel better about yourself choosing the right foods to eat like cutting out fried foods or um fatty foods are, are the best way to lose weight and stay fit exercise is important but the most important thing is your eating because you can exercise 24 hours a day, but if you're still eating the wrong food, you're not going to see any results. There you have it. Joining us now is Director of Medical Surgical Weight Loss and Diabetes, Dr. Janet Martin. Dr. Martin, thank you so much for being with us today. We've heard an array of things that people have done to lose weight. You are a weight management specialist. Just first of all, let's start off with some of the stories that you've heard with, that people have done to lose weight. <laughs> Hello, Shashina, and thank you for having me here. Um, many things. We've done so many things, not only in this country, throughout the world. Women and men are looking for an easy way to lose the weight that they've gained from over many years. And so they are willing to try anything that promises a quick few pounds off. The cabbage diet is one of them. Uh, sometimes I see that some of the staff that I work with, uh, with, they're on their weight loss binge and you'll hear them saying, we're eating cabbage soup all week. Uh, but I think after a couple of weeks of eating cabbage soup and drinking water, they get kind of tired mm -hmm. and they go back to the behaviors that have caused them to gain the weight. So the cabbage diet is one. Another one, persons are mixing a lot of herbs and spices together and drinking those or drinking water with um, lemon all day mm -hmm. and, and they're saying that that's cutting their appetite and, decre and increasing their metabolism. So those are just some of the things that persons are doing. Um, most recent over the last couple of years, persons have been jumping on the keto mm -hmm. diet meal plan and I'll go more into that later on as we continue with our talk. And the keto meal plan is one that we reduce a lot of carbohydrates um, and we only eat particular vegetables or fruits and we increase our proteins. Um, persons have had success with that, but that's not a sustainable uh, diet to go on. So yeah, many myths um, out there about losing weight. But the key to losing weight is um, changing your behaviors. It's a lifestyle change. And it begins with mindset, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Which is the hardest part because, you know, we, we grow up with a very rich diet, I would say. Um, so the mindset is perhaps the hardest part. What do you say uh, when your clients come to you and they are at that point where they say, I have to do something? 
How do you get them to change that mindset? Yeah, that's such a smart question because everything begins with the mind. Mm -hmm. We know that. God says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so the mindset, if, if we determine that we are going to start a new behavior that is going to increase our overall health, then um, we need to then start putting in some plans to, to stick with that. I want to go back to something that you said uh, before we get into really delving into how um, important it is to manage your weight. You mentioned that a lot of persons want something fast. They want it quick. Obviously, it's not an overnight process when you put on the weight. It takes time to put on um, a significant amount of pounds. Um, some of the fad diets you mentioned were the cabbage soup and, and some of these liquids that people drink for 10 to 15 days. Mm -hmm. Are there any health implications to doing these types of fast and fad diets, including diet pills? Yeah, that's a very good question because there are the, the Food and Drug Administration have found in their research with some of these fad dyes, particularly those with those drinks that I mentioned, they are not they, they have no nutrition. And the body requires nutrition in order for it to work. Uh, we get the gas for our body to work from our main food source, which are carbohydrates. And so if we're not giving ourselves the right carbohydrates, the right amount uh, cooked in, in a healthier way on a daily basis, we're going to be, you know, energy deficient and nutrient deficient. Mm -hmm. And so the Food and Drug Administration have found that even the dietary supplements that have, have been labeled to help with weight loss, some of those have injurious mm -hmm. um, chemicals, chemicals that can actually injure the body. Um, and so they, you know, they advise against using those things. So someone walks into your office at doctor's hospital. They come to you and they say, Dr. Martin, I really need your help. Do you find that people get to this point um, when they are already suffering from health implications or um, consequences as a result of being obese? Is that usually when people try to take a hold of their diet? Mm -hmm. Usually, usually, we do have some persons who um, would come in seeking because they've, they've heard about the work that we do and the work that I've been doing for over 20 years in the Bahamas. They would seek me out. But usually it's because they have gotten, gone to the doctor and gotten a report of their blood sugar levels, mm -hmm. either having them as a, in pre-diabetic state or um, type 2 diabetes, or they're at risk for some other illness or their blood pressure is extremely high um, or their, high, their cholesterol levels are really high. And so doctor would send them you know, for, for some advice mm -hmm. and some guidance. And then of course, their body mass indexes has placed them in either overweight or obese. And I'd just like to interject here and explain to our listening audi audience what obesity really is. Obesity really is an excess of fat tissue inside our bodies. And it really is caused by us eating too many calories in one sitting and not having enough exercise to burn it off. Now the World Health Organization and the Center for Disease, they class obesity as a disease now. And um, ob an obese person has a body mass index of 30 and above. Someone who is overweight has a body mass index of 24 um, 24.9 to 29.9. And so healthy weight, um, so someone with a healthy weight has a body mass index of 18.5 to 24.9. And so as you said earlier, Shoshina, this weight doesn't come on overnight. But we do have persons who come to me and after I have done their initial assessments. And one of those initial assessments is just to sit down and talk with the person to find out what their mindset is, to find out where they are, how did they end up in front of me, whether they were sent, referred by our physician, or self-referral, or another friend or family member. And that determines whether they are the reason why they are coming to you, exactly, exactly. why. Exactly, mm -hmm. and, and not only that, what it also does, it determines their motivation, mm -hmm. their personal, whether they have bought into this or they just came because they're afraid now, right. they're anxious now, their blood test said this now. 
Um, and some persons would say to me, Docs, a doctor told me I have diabetes, but I don't claim it. I'm not claiming mm -hmm. that. And I say to them, and that's a cultural right. um, belief, you know, I say, well, it's claimed you, so let's start there. Wow. You know, let's start there. Okay, what does that mean for you? And so I, I start with a conversation. What do you expect? from sitting here, um, and this is how I work with you. I see you, you know, according to work um, statistics, we should work with a patient at least 16 visits over a period of about three months, yeah. because that's when we really can see behavioral changes. Within the first month, we see some, we see the labs changing for the better, um, if it's prediabetes or a type 2 diabetes or high cholesterol, if they have engaged, fully immersed themselves in the behavioral changes as it relates to nutrition and exercise. And of course, stress management, because stress causes us to gain weight. A sleep apnea, lack, lack of sleep. You know, another thing that causes us to gain weight is some women have been diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS. Um, and Dr. David Simmons will go more into that as well later. Um, and then Cushing syndromes, and, and that's with, what is that? that? That is a decrease in your thyroid fu um, functions. Um, and Dr. David Simmons, our endocrinologist, would normally refer patients who have, you know, some health condition that is also causing them to gain weight. So Dr. Martin, when, when these patients come to your uh, office, what is the first reference of order. Do you say, okay, let's see if you can do this on your own uh, first before advising them of additional measures that you can do at, at, at doctor's hospital? Is that mm -hmm. how it works? Yeah, normally I would, I would find out what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, this is what we have to offer. But either way, we start with medical nutrition. Because if you don't start to change some things in the way you eat, if we don't start to understand what food do, does to our body and form a new relationship with food and then start to listen to our body and move our body regularly, then, you know, our mindset, you know, will follow because we've already determined that we're here and then now we have to action it out. And so I get them to sit down and understand what creating a SMART goal is like. You know, be specific about what you want to accomplish. Um, this is what we have to offer, but it all starts with medical nutrition, behavior change, lifestyle changes. And then, you know, after you've, you've seen me two times and you want to go down the surgical route, mm -hmm. we offer the surgical balloon. That is a non-surgical approach. Um, and it is a gastric balloon that is inserted via an endoscopy. The person is put to sleep under sedation. Um, Dr. Ranga, our surgeon, introduced the balloon through an endoscope. And once it gets in, into the stomach, he fills that balloon with water. And it's an actual balloon, and it really? takes up space, three-quarter space in the stomach. And so it reduces the amount of food you can take in in one sitting. And so we talk about that, and I say, say to them, if you're interested, then you will see Dr. Renga, and he'll explain it more. Are there any uh, health implications when doing that, the balloon? Not really. Uh, the only um, si uh, thing with that is you have to have a BMI 30, mm -hmm. um, not more than 40, right? And also another contraindication for that is if you present with GERD, that's gastric reflux disease. You know, you're always burping after you eat. Sometimes you have indigestion, you're bringing up the food, um, and Dr. Renga would question you and assess you. If you have GERD, then you are not a candidate for the gastric balloon. And then if you don't want the gastric balloon, but you really know that you want the gastric sleeve surgery, or what we refer to as the sleeve gastrectomy, that is, um, is, is an option, but you have to work with me for at least 12 visits. Mm -hmm. There's one insurance company on the island that pays for that, and that's Atlantic Medical. And they require 12 visits, um, they require the mindset, the behavioral and lifestyle changes, and a report showing that um, so much weight loss and um, 
And, and with that, the stomach is reduced to three quarters, to a quarter of its present size. And it really looks like um, a banana peel. So it's slim and it's smaller. And, um, and then the next surgical option is the gastric bypass surgery. And that is more detailed mm -hmm. and um, patients would see Dr. Renga for, for that as well. Okay, so let's go back to the balloon. How long does that surgery take? Um, how long is that balloon inserted for? What, what is the duration of that? Mm -hmm. And then what is the amount of weight loss expected once you would have performed something like this? Sounds like you're interested to see No, now. I'm not, Sounds but like I, I know people are going to message <laughs> and ask me about it, but yeah. Kurt Cooper and I, my producer, <laughs> Yeah. So, so let's start balloon. with that. So the balloon is, 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 it goes in using an endoscopy, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it's not really surgery, surgery, but you do, you're given a sedative in, in the theater and um, it takes doctor about maybe half an hour to insert that balloon. And uh, so it's half a day in the hospital. It's an in, in outpatient surgery. In New Providence. In New Providence, okay. yeah. And, um, the maximum amount of weight we look, we've seen with that is anywhere from 40 to 60 pounds. There again, medical nutrition is ex extremely important. L behavioral lifestyle changes are in, in, important, including exercise regularly, and of course, looking at your low calorie meal plan, low carb meal plan as well. If you are really overweight with a body mass index in, ex in excess of 30, um, you're looking to, to decrease your caloric intake from anywhere from 500 calories to 700 calories wow. per day. Wow. Um, and, then, and then, of course, bringing in that exercise, mm -hmm. um, which will help, to, uh, help you to lose the weight. Okay, let's go into the bypass now. I know this is a major surgery, correct? Yes, the gastric bypass surgery is a major surgery. Um, gastric sleeve is major as well, but the bypass surgery is that they, they really, really take a lot of, you lose a lot, most of your stomach, and that one, that causes, uh, there's a lot of side effects with that. We don't do that one, that one in Nassau um, as much as we do the gastric sleeve. Mm -hmm. Just give us uh, some more insight into the gastric sleeve. With the gastric sleeve, and you have a booklet here, uh, patients, I work with them with a, um, a very low caloric diet for at least uh, 12 weeks before, 10 days before surgery, they go on a liquid meal plan, um, nutritious but still liquid, to clean the gut out. And then after surgery, you're on liquids with protein for the first two weeks. And then in, on the third and fourth week, you're with pureed foods. Because remember now, the stomach, you've had stomach surgery. Mm -hmm. It's smaller, you have sutures in there. And so we now need to progress your eating. And so it starts with just liquids and protein in your liquids. And then you move on to pureed and then soft and then regular foods. You're seeing me every two to three weeks and I progress you along. With the gastric sleeve, we've had patients lose up to 80 to 100 pounds or more. Um, with the balloons, 40 to 60 pounds. Um, and, uh, but the maintenance, remember, mm -hmm. like I said earlier, we start everything with mindset change. Mm -hmm. And so maintenance is, you know, it's continuing with your it's medical nutrition, mm -hmm. choosing the right foods, the portions, getting that exercise in. Um, living, you know, reju you know, minding your stress sores in life. All of us have stress sores, mm -hmm. and how to live mindfully um, moving forward. You mentioned portion sizes, and I think this is something that most Bahamians may have an issue with. Um, usually on a Sunday, we're going back to that part two and three times. Um, how important is it to take into consideration your portion sizes when it comes to weight management? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is extremely important um, because that's what got us into the problems in the first place. You mentioned this weight came on over time. So over time, eating excess calories and not exercising and the types of um, food choices, you know. Um, carbohydrates is our gas. 
but the type of carbohydrates that we choose, the portions and how we prepare them are extremely important. So on a Sunday, we, you know, we've gotten into the habit of having two meats and mm -hmm. we've gotten into the habit of having rice, coleslaw and macaroni, right? And sometimes potato salad and we want all of that on the plate. Most times potato salad. Most times <laughs> potato salad. And so it's very important and like I said earlier, if you want to lose weight, you have to decrease either 500 of those calories mm -hmm. or if you have an excessive amount of weight, you want to you want to decrease up to a maximum of about 7 to 750. And this is research. Mm -hmm. You know, this is researched by the American Diabetes Association, the American Heart Association, and the Obesity Association. Um, if you want to lose the weight, you have to decrease your caloric intake. We have to get moving regularly. And we also have to look at the types of carbohydrates that we're choosing um, and the times that we're choosing to eat. And so- That is another thing, the times that we choose to eat. Talk about um, the importance of eating at a specific time and shutting down at a, at a certain time. Yes, yes. And, and, and in bringing that in, I'll talk about um, I'll bring in, in the fasting, you know? Uh, a lot of people are doing the intermittent fasting, and so with eating at a certain period, and it's really just no food for a certain period, um, really by 7, 8 o'clock, we should be not looking for food mm -hmm. anymore, especially if we're turning in around 9, 10 o'clock. We want to give our stomachs, it takes about two hours, two to three hours for food to digest in our stomachs efficiently. And so if you're eating at 9, 10 o'clock a large meal and going to sleep on that, um, you're going to have nightmares. <laughs> but it's also not going to be good for your blood sugar levels and digestion, you know, and, you know, GERD, um, gastric reflux disorders and other, other disorders. And so anywhere from 7, 8 o'clock at night, we want to be cutting down or eating our smallest meal in the evening and then eating our larger meal during the day. Uh, Dr. Martin, before we wrap up, for those persons who may not be able to come and see you right away, what do you suggest for them to start doing almost immediately? Um, do you subscribe to the uh, intermittent fasting and to the keto diet, um, which, is, which are two of the more popular things that we see people within our culture are now doing? Do you mm -hmm. subscribe to those things? What, what do you say to the person who's watching this now and you want to say, okay, get the ball rolling, they want to, what is the best thing to do? The best thing I would, what I would recommend to persons is, um, you know, look at where you are now. You know, start to record what you're eating. Because it's when we record and we look at it, we say, did I eat all of that? Or did I drink all of that? Because we can drink our calories as well. Mm -hmm. You know, some persons come to me and they say, well, I don't eat much, but I drink. Okay, what do you drink? I drink four sodas in a day. Well, one can of soda has 10 to 12 teaspoons of sugar. Mm -hmm. One teaspoon of sugar is four grams of, four, four calories, right? Um, so um, those are some of the things I would say to persons. Start to write down what you're eating and um, begin to shave off some of your portions and get moving. Start with 15 minute walking in the, day, in the morning, 15 minute in the evening. Studies show that if we get 30 minutes a day, five days a week, uh, we can improve our blood sugars, blood pressure, and lose some weight. So start there and then seek me out at um, Doctors Hospital Family Medical Center and I can help you move it along. Thank you very much, Dr. Martin. For those of you who are watching Doctors Hospital, they have an array of things that you can do um, to start your weight management, bariatric surgery, you have the balloon, gastric bypass, and of course, uh, a nutritionist on board who's also able to help you count those calories, which is also equally as important. Dr. Martin, thank you so much for being with us and we hope to bring you back on to wrap up our show today. But don't you go anywhere, stay with us. When we come back, we hear from a patient who is part of Doctors Hospital's weight management care. So she shares her struggles and success on losing weight the right way. We'll be back right after this. In Grand Bahama, our lamp just got brighter. 
Introducing Lamp Ultimate from Unlimited Urgent Care Visits. Oh, good. So we're just going to give you some oxygen. To Unlimited Primary Care Visits. How can we help today? From Unlimited X-rays. To Unlimited Ultrasound. My baby! And spend no more than $40 on non-specialty medication. Lamp Ultimate is the affordable healthcare plan that you've been dreaming of. And it's only available at Doctors Hospital in Grand Bahama. We all need to save. Save time, gas, and money. Shopping at Save More can help you do just that. Make us your first stop for all your prescription needs and medical supplies. Get all your health and beauty items at the same time. And don't miss our huge choice of snacks to satisfy your cravings. And the largest vitamin selection and over-the-counter relief products. Need diapers and other baby care items? First stop. The new section for makeovers, cosmetics, and beautiful jewelry will make you sparkle for that next special event. Save More Drugs, your more store. Health officials announced early on that the curve of the fourth wave has been flattened. Standby talent. Two and cue. We have a dynamic team of diverse, enthusiastic journalists committed to uncovering the truth and delivering it with zeal and integrity. Paul confirms that the victim's body was found by an individual who was involved in the search We tell the heartwarming tales of resilience and success from local politics to cultural events. We have it covered. We have Azure coming live from Bimini tonight for our top story. We are your trusted source in the North. We are ZNS Northern Edition. Hello, my name is Tenovia Hanna, and I have four children. I started my weight loss journey about six months ago, August, and it has been life-changing for me. The thing is, you have to start where you are, trust the process. You're not gonna always feel like doing it every day, but one step at a time, a little bit at a time, try to be deliberate about what it is that you wanna achieve. Make sure that you have the support system around you, those people that are going to encourage you, and you put in the work. And anything that you put work into, after a time, it must give in. 28 and a half years ago, when I had my daughter, I had pre and that's when you get high blood pressure at the end of the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And I've been struggling with hypertension since then. Over the years, each baby, I gained more weight, mm -hmm. and I just didn't know what to do to keep it off. And sometimes, you know, you'd try a diet, and it didn't work, and so then you, so what's the use? You start eating again. <laughs> and so, um, as we were watching the news, there was a commercial that came on and we saw Dr. Monique Pratt who was talking about hypertension. And um, we saw that she was a nephrologist and so we wanted to get my pressure under control because, you know, you can feel the tension in the back hair, the back of your neck. And so we wanted to address it. And I went to see Dr. Pratt and she did a different routine with what she would give me for medicine. Mm -hmm. And then she recommended that I see a nutritionist because, you know, keeping the pressure under control is because of the other thing that was going on in my life where I was just overweight. And um, she recommended Dr. Martin, who's the nutritionist at Doctors Hospital. And so when I went to see her, things began to turn around. And so the weight has come off me 
at this point, but also I'm on the road to better health. My A1C in the beginning was seven at its worst, and yesterday it was 5.9. I want to encourage you to not give up on yourself. Your health is important. Better than the clothes you could buy or the things that you acquire, your health is very important. Welcome back. Joining us now is Sunivia Hanna, a patient of Dr. Martin. Sunivia, thank you so much for being with us. Well, firstly, uh, you mentioned that you are almost 60 years old with four beautiful children, but as you had one child, the weight came on more and more. Talk a little bit about that because I think that is a similar challenge with most women. Well, you know, we say that we're eating for the baby, which I've learned over the years, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> we just like to indulge in whatever it is that we feel like eating at the time and um, we haven't learned how to manage the weight during pregnancy. And so for each child that I had, I put on more weight and more weight. And like I said, I have four children. And so I went up to 237 pounds. At some point, your pressure became a major concern for you. Well, um, with the one that's 28, in my third trimester, I developed preeclampsia, is, is it called? Yeah. Yes. And so I've been on medication for high blood pressure since, well, for 28 years. What made you come to the realization that not only did you want to do something about your weight, but you needed to seek help as a resource? Um, you went to doctor's hospital where you would, would have met Dr. Martin, and I invited Dr. Martin back because just the conversation and the synergy in the beginning where you mm -hmm. talked about you not even knowing if you would be able to do this. Mm -hmm. um, what made you decide to go in the first place? Well, first I got there because my pressure was out of control. I could, I could feel that I'm sick. I mean, just the pressure in the back here. So I started with Dr. Pratt, who managed my blood pressure with different medication. It wasn't just one. It was try this with this, no, that's not working for you. And so, you know, even with that, that was important to go because we feel like we could drink the drinks at home and the bush medicine and, you know, mm -hmm. Bahamians or Caribbean people, especially, we believe wholly and solely in that, but that doesn't always work, not for everyone. So anyway, um, as Dr. Pratt found the right mixture of medicines for me, she saw that there was another need. Mm -hmm. And that was for me to understand how to get the weight under control, which she felt like was a contributor to my high blood pressure, hypertension. So you <laughs> meet Dr. Martin, and I'll ask you, Dr. Martin, uh, in meeting Sinovia the first time, uh, what was her mindset like? Because that's the first place you love to start. Well, what was her mindset like? Was she ready to do this? Not really. Uh, she came because her blood pressure was up, like, as she said, but her blood sugars were high as well, mm -hmm. which placed her in um, obese, uh, type 2 diabetes, no onset type 2 diabetes, with an A1C over 6.5. I think her A1C was around, hovering around 7. Mm -hmm. And um, so Dr. Pratt sent her for two reasons, the blood pressure, three reasons, the blood pressure, the weight, and the blood sugars, which we refer to as metabolic syndrome. Um, when you have two of the three, which is um, you know, high blood pressure, type two diabetes, high blood sugar, um, high cholesterol, and obesity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, two out of, uh, out of three or four of those, you have metabolic syndrome. I think so what I did you say right. to her? So um, when she came in, um, you know, I just said, you know, you've been referred. How can I help you today? What are you looking for? 
and she started to talk and then and I, I, I went through my nutritional assessment and while she was going through it I just highlighted some things. I did a body composition, I put her on the scale. The scale I have gives a lot of information. It tells me whether you're cheating or you're not. Whoa. Um, <laughs> so it gives me your, not only your weight, but it also gives me your body fat percentage, which is more a definitive value than body mass index. Because someone can have a body mass index that places them in the obese category of 30 and above, but that could be more muscle. Muscle is heavier than fat. Um, but her fat percentage confirmed her obesity, um, which was so much for her age. And then it also gives me her physiological age. That's the aging of what fat does to the internal organs that we cannot see. That when we go to the doctor then, our pressures are up, our sugars are up. So her physiological age was way over her chronological age. The good thing about it is as we lose the fat, then that age comes down. It also gave me her visceral fat. And that's the amount of fat that we have collecting around the abdominal cavity and other organs that cause, places us at a greater risk for cardiovascular disease. So that is what I found. I shared all of that with her. And she, that's when she said, you know, I really don't want to be here. This is hard. And so I started to say, let's break it down into segments. We don't have to change all these behaviors overnight. Mm -hmm. um, let's go one step at a time. What do you like doing? What can you do? And what was that response when you uh, met with Dr. Martin and she explains to you uh, some of the behavioral changes that you had to make? We're talking about mindset. Did you think you were able to do it? At first, I didn't think that I could do it. But as I tried and I saw the progress, it encouraged me to continue. What did you do? Well, first of all, I did some research. Mm -hmm. One of the things I learned with trying to manage my hypertension is that I'm very salt sensitive. So I started looking for recipes that I can use um, that doesn't have a lot of salt. Mm -hmm or I'd make the adjustment. And she gave me a lot of information, what you could have, how much of what you could have, because I find that's our problem too. We like biggie size, right? everything. And so, well, the sodas definitely had to go. A giant Coke was my favorite thing. And, <laughs> <laughs> and rice. Uh, bread is okay, but like I know that I had to make some changes. So what does your daily diet consist of now? What, is, what does it At look like? At this point, I eat eggs in the morning. Every morning? Every morning I have eggs. And I have a cup of coffee, black. Mm. No cream, no sugar. Lunch, when I come home after one, I have my dinner, whatever it is. If it's meat and vegetables, or meat and, a, and just the salad. And um, sometimes I'd have a small piece of sweet potato. But before, she could tell you, I didn't want to touch potato or anything. I don't care if sweet potato, mm. why, the why orange not? one, because you hear the word sweet? Mm -hmm. Okay, the sugar content I was afraid of. Mm. But she explained to me how much of the, that's the orange sweet yes. potato that I get out. Bahamians like the red skin one. Yeah. Mm. So now, Dr. Martin, I want to bring you in here because as so Nivea talks a little bit about what our diet con contains, do you find that people are afraid to make these types of lifestyle changes because they're they may get bored with the diet, like eating eggs every day, mm -hmm. um, along with the black coffee? Mm -hmm. Um, and but, I know that's something that may be your preference, yes, but it's her yeah. preference. some persons yes. may be afraid to make those changes yeah. because they get bored with it. Yeah. Do you yeah. find that? Yeah, and, and the thing about it is, what I say to people is that your meal plan is individualized. Mm -hmm. It is based on what, what that, that, that nutrition assessment I took. It is based on the foods that you like. Mm -hmm. Now let me show you how you can make it a little mm -hmm. more healthier. Mm -hmm. And let me show you how much of it you can have. And, and when you can have it. So there are discretionary calories. There are functions. We have to continue to live. Mm -hmm. And so how do we live in a world with all these nice things to have? Mm -hmm. 
you use discretion, moderation. You don't eat it every day. You don't eat it every week. I just had a birthday. I had ice cream and cake on the weekend. Friday, Saturday, and yesterday. Uh -huh. Now, I'm not eating any ice cream and cake for another couple of weeks or months. Mm -hmm. um, I'm ensured that I got my workout in every day. And so how to balance life, um, the foods that you love, with the healthier options. We really should be having half our plate vegetables and salad because that's when we get the, all the nutrients that the body requires. And those are the healthier carbohydrates that, the, that fuels us. So Navia, are you now able to uh, enjoy, like Dr. Martin mentions, uh, I know you said you love rice, you love bread. At, are you able to enjoy them now or do you just strictly Christmas, stay away? At Christmas, I had in that starch portion, I had stuffing, rice, and macaroni in a quarter of my plate. Mm. I had a half a salad, half plate of salad, and meat in the other portion which was turkey and a small piece of ham. Valentine's Day, I had a chocolate muffin. Mm -hmm. Did she so, tell you about this, Dr. Martin? Yeah, I see, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's, it's, she's taught me how to balance mm -hmm. what I eat. I can't eat like that every day. If you right. remind me, the big pack of chips or whatever, that's what I used to right. eat. But that's hurting me and that costs me a lot physically. Mm -hmm. You've lost 41 pounds now since August and since being on this uh, program with Dr. Martin and, mm -hmm. and Doctors Hospital. Have you found um, that some of your health concerns have faded away? How yes. are you doing now? The A1C, like she'd mentioned, that was my biggest concern because diabetes and hypertension is in my family. Mm -hmm. All my uncles, my mother, you know, and her siblings, everyone is diabetic. Everyone dealt with hypertension. And so what frightened me was I saw myself heading in that same direction. And so the quick diets and, you know, that don't work, I, I needed to make a positive change, something that was gonna make a difference. And I was, I, I must say, I am proud of myself. I am, because when I saw that 5.7 result, it's like, I can't believe I did it. You did it. You yeah. know, and so it takes that consistency, it takes the support, and it takes following. And I, the biggest thing for me, what she did, was she educated me. Well, thank you so much, Zenevia mm -hmm. and Dr. Martin. Congratulations on your weight loss journey. And of course, we will check in with you and hope that you will both come back to continue, continue to share your success in your journey with us. When we come back, diabetes continue to plague many residents on this island. But what is the link between your metabolism, diabetes, and endocrinology? Well, we'll tell you right after this break. Stay with us. In Grand Bahama, our lamp just got brighter. Introducing Lamp Ultimate from Unlimited Urgent Care Visits. Oh, good. So we're just going to give you some oxygen. To Unlimited Primary Care Visits. How can we help today? From Unlimited X-rays. To Unlimited Ultrasound. My baby! And spend no more than $40 on non-specialty medication. Lamp Ultimate is the affordable healthcare plan that you've been dreaming of. And it's only available at Doctors Hospital in Grand Bahama. We all need to save. Save time, gas, and money. Shopping at Save More can help you do just that. Make us your first stop for all your prescription needs and medical supplies. Get all your health and beauty items at the same time. And don't miss our huge choice of snacks to satisfy your cravings. And the largest vitamin selection and over-the-counter relief products. Need diapers and other baby care items? First stop. The new section for makeovers, cosmetics, and beautiful jewelry will make you sparkle for that next special event. Save More Drugs, your more store. Health officials announced early on that the curve of the fourth wave has been flat. Standby talent. Two and cue. We have a dynamic team of diverse, enthusiastic journalists. 
committed to uncovering the truth and delivering it with zeal and integrity. The confirms that the victim's body was found by an individual who was involved in the search We tell the heartwarming tales of resilience and success from local politics to cultural events. We have it covered. We are your trusted source in the North. We are ZNS Northern Edition. Welcome back to the ZNS Health Zone. Joining us now is Dr. Ariane Davis-Simmons, lead physician with a focus in diabetes, endocrinology, and metabolism. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. So let's get right into it. One in seven persons in the Bahamas suffer from type 2 diabetes. Talk a little bit about that for us. So type 2 diabetes is a, is a chronic medical condition which leads to high sugars, high blood sugars. And that happens for three main reasons. Um, obesity, so you have increased insulin resistance. Over time, your pancreas starts to decrease its insulin production, and then too much sugar being produced from the liver. Now, we've heard a lot about metabolism um, and the link between your metabolism, uh, weight management, and as you've just mentioned, diabetes. Talk about what is um, your metabolism and how should your metabolism function? Okay, so metabolism is how your body breaks down food for energy. Um, so as we know, food and, and carbohydrates are the main fuel for the body. So you can have what we say a slower metabolism where your body uses the calories less effectively. So you may be more prone to weight gain. Um, there are some people who we say have a faster metabolism or genetics or things like that, um, but just really how your body uses the energy. That's metabolism. There are diseases that can change the way your metabolism works. So there's endocrine conditions that can do that, that can either speed up your metabolism or slow it down, um, in particular like thyroid conditions. So you can see where people may gain weight or lose weight depending on what their metabolism is. Um, how we use energy um, can also affect your weight, obviously. Mm -hmm. So if you have a sedentary lifestyle where you're taking in excessive calories, that's not all based on metabolism, but you're taking excess calories, your body then stores it as fat, which leads to overweight and obesity status. What, what would be a reason for someone to come and see an endocrinologist? Okay, well, let's start with what is an endocrinologist. Endocrinologists are doctors who specialize in the field of endocrine system, which is glands. So we're gland doctors or hormone doctors. So glands are organs in the body that make hormones. So that would be your hypothalamus, your pituitary, your thyroid, pancreas, adrenals, ovaries, um, and testes. So any hormonal condition that you may have, um, you may want to come see the doctor if the hormones are out of balance. Endocrinologists are also diabetes specialists. So we're specializing in the updated treatments of diabetes management, technology devices. Um, and you know, if you do have type one or type two diabetes, you should come and see an endocrinologist. Also, we are obesity and metabolism um, experts. So if you have issues in those areas, you may want to seek out care um, with an endocrinologist. Let's go back to diabetes. I, I believe that I saw somewhere that uh, diabetes is the fifth leading cause of death within the Bahamas. Yep, and it's about the seventh leading cause of death worldwide. Wow. So when we talk about diabetes, we're talking about uncontrolled diabetes, okay? So these are where your sugars are not at target. You're not achieving those A1C goals. Uh, and the A1C is your three-month blood, blood sugar check that lets us know how well your diabetes is controlled. So if you're not at target, and A1C is riding high or elevated, it can lead to a lot of complications. So diabetes is the leading cause of blindness. Wow. Um, it is the leading cause of um, neuropathy, which can lead to amputations. And it's one, also one of the leading causes of chronic kidney disease and end-stage renal disease, so people requiring dialysis. Earlier uh, tonight, Dr. Martin also talked about uh, seeing an increase in in obesity in children. Does this also suggest that there's an increase in children now having diabetes? Yes, so when we talk about type two diabetes, so type two diabetes is closely related to obesity, 
all right? So the more excess fat you have, the more insulin resistance you have. So insulin is a hormone that's made by the pancreas. Its job is to, it's the key that opens the door to let the sugar into the cells to be used as fuel. So if you have increasing insulin resistance, the sugar's just sitting in your blood. So because we're seeing more childhood obesity, we are seeing more prediabetes and type 2 diabetes uh, in kids. So usually we used to think that type 2 diabetes happened at over the age of 40. Mm -hmm. But now with, with obesity becoming a pandemic in the Bahamas, we're seeing it at much younger ages. What is now, um, or what is doctor's hospital approach really to treating diabetes and uh, by extension preventing diabetes? Got so when we talk about appropriate um, type 2 diabetes, diabetes management, it really should be a team approach. Um, so we know that with diabetes management, lifestyle is a big component. So 90% of diabetes care is self-care, how you care for yourself. Um, so we do have diabetes educators on staff to show you how to care for your diabetes, meaning checking your sugars appropriately, how to check your sugars, what to eat, how much exercise to get, appropriate portion size. Um, so, and we also have nutritionists to assist you with that. We have endocrinologists like myself to, uh, um, uh, to prescribe medications um, to help you. If you are obese with type 2 diabetes, there are some special medications we may put you on to help you lose weight since that's the main driving force. Mm -hmm. Diabetes care, because it involves so much lifestyle modification, medication, it can become not burdensome to patients, but sometimes people get something called diabetes burnout or diabetes, depression, or anxiety because they have to monitor their disease so carefully. So we also have um, therapists, psychiatrists on staff to assist if there's any mental health issues that are preventing you from getting appropriate care. Now, Dr. Davis Simmons, I wanted to talk to you about um, some prescriptions that people are using on one hand for diabetes, but also for weight management. That is the Ozempic, Wagovi, Manjaro, Zepbound, I think it Zepbound, is. Zepbound, yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about what these are and um, who fits the criteria for these types of prescriptions that we see many, I mean, it is just a, it's going viral, it's a global mm -hmm. sensation. Mm -hmm. These are some of the main methods that people are now using to lose weight, even those who do not have diabetes. Um, diabetes. Okay. so. Where did all of this come from? So this is out of research. So we know that for type 2 diabetes, obesity is the main driving force. So in research and medications be rolling out in terms of big pharma, we were targeting the, ob the obesity. Mm -hmm. And by targeting the obesity, the diabetes usually resolves and goes into remission. So there's many studies that have shown that even in our bar uh, bariatric surgery um, population who have diabetes, when they have significant weight loss, the diabetes goes away. Wow. So this is where all of this kind of came out from. So when we talk about medications for diabetes, if obesity is the main driving force, we should target that, mm -hmm. right? So at the lower dosing, some of the meds you discussed are di pure diabetes medications. So the Ozempic, the Manjaro, they are FDA approved for type 2 diabetes. The benefit is it also has weight loss. These same medications at higher dosing are pure obesity medications. So the counterpart for Ozempic is going to be Wagovi. Mm -hmm. Same medication, it's semaglutide, but higher dosing is obesity medication. It's made by the same company, mm -hmm. marketed at a higher dose, higher cost. Um, and then the same with Manjaro. Manjaro at the lower dose is a type 2 diabetes medication. At the higher dose, it's a pure obesity medication called Zepbound. Are they, there any health implications with taking um, any of these? Do they affect any other parts of your bodies, organs, anything? Are they relatively safe? Okay. So the way these medications worked are by two main reasons. So one, they stimulate something called GLP-1 um, agonist or GIP. Those have effects on the level of the brain. So they are actually satiety hormones. So by boosting that, you feel full. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to eat. So if you take in less calories, you lose weight. Mm -hmm. They also have a benefit of helping your body make more insulin in a, in a smart way to prevent sugar highs after food. And they slow down the way the food moves to the digestive system. So you feel full. Mm -hmm. And if you, know, so you feel full, you eat less. Right. So they, that, all of the FDA approved medications for obesity all work by suppressing the appetite. So if we talk about side effects, 
you can have some side effects. The side effects are going to be mainly due to it slowing down the way the food moves through the system. So with some people, they get more nausea. Mm. The nausea usually goes away after two to three weeks of taking the medication. It also slows down um, just the transitive food. So some people may get more constipation, more reflux. Again, those symptoms can usually resolve by dietary modification mm. and also by increasing fiber in the diet. So those would be the kind of the main um, side effects. Finally, uh, before we wrap up this segment, the persons who are watching and they are, have not been diagnosed with diabetes, what are some of the signs that they should look for um, if they in fact do have diabetes and need to come in for a proper diagnosis? Okay. So what I like to tell patients is for one, diabetes is a silent killer. So usually wow. when you start to have symptoms already, your sugars are very elevated. Wow. So you need to be getting annual visits. So preventative care, prevention is better than cure. So you should be getting screened. So in particular, if you're obese or overweight, if you have a family history of diabetes. So if you have one parent with type two diabetes, you're about a 17% increased risk of getting it. Wow. If you have two parents with diabetes, you're about 50% in, uh, increased chance of getting it. Um, if you have polycystic ovarian syndrome, you should be getting screened um, because women with PCOS, 50% of them will go on to develop um, diabetes. If you had gestational diabetes, so diabetes in pregnancy, you should also be getting screened because that increases your risk. So get screened regularly. Um, don't wait for symptoms. Awesome. Any final words at all that you'd like to leave for our audience? Yeah, so as I said, prevention is better than cure. Mm -hmm. um, like Dr. Martin would have said, you know, small changes go a long way. Mm -hmm. Be very consistent, mindfulness. Make sure you're having portion control and, and getting exercise in because that can prevent a lot of the long-term complications of any chronic medical condition. Thank you very much, Dr. David Simmons. And we hope to see you again sometime soon on our ZNS Health Zone show. Great. Thanks Thank for you having for being me. Here. Well, as we conclude today's episode, we're reminded of the importance of prioritizing our health, particularly when it comes to managing weight loss and diabetes. Remember, whether you're seeking to shed excess weight or navigate the complexities of diabetes management, you're not alone. With the right support, guidance, and determination, positive change is certainly within reach. Join us next time as we continue to explore topics vital to our well-being. Until then, stay informed, stay proactive, and above all, stay healthy. From all of us here at the ZNS Health Zone, I'm Shashina Wolf-Farkasin. Have a great evening.